the new iPhone 11 Pro. It's here. Well, today's video may not be very exciting. Unless, of course, you're really into unboxing cell phones, which is exactly what we're going to do today. We are going to open up the new iPhone 11 Pro and just see what the contents are, and that's about it. So here it is, the iPhone 11 Pro in all of its glory. Amazing. It looks exactly like all of the other ones. Nothing different on the front. And of course, we've got to get the peel, which I don't know, that's half the excitement. First glance, front of the phone is not exciting. It's the exact same thing as uh, the previous ones. And I can see it's already got the huge notch, whatever. But the back is different. Now, I do like this midnight green. I think it looks very nice. It's a nice touch from the three other colors that they do have, which is gold, silver, space gray, and now midnight green. Uh, what else is contained within this? First off, we have our little um, instruction booklet or manuals, whatever. Quick start guide. So in case you don't know how to turn on the phone, this will tell you how to turn on the phone and turn up the volume and turn it down. I'm sure that's really hard to figure out. Um, oh, you have your compliance sheet here. Yay. Stickers in case you need to tell everybody that you're an Apple shell. And then a SIM, a SIM card removal pin. Now, this is nice. At least this I find handy. We'll get those put back together here in a moment. Uh, you get your typical uh, lightning port headphones, generic headphones from Apple. I sure wish that they would go back to a quarter inch jack, or sorry, an eighth inch headphone jack, which we know they won't. Uh, I guess odds are that they won't. I prefer that. And then you have your 18 watt fast charger, which this is nice because it's about time we had a fast charger for the iPhone. The only thing that is interesting is it is USB-C. This part here. Apple in their packaging. It's USB-C to lightning cable. Which brings up a very interesting question. What do you do if you're in your car? And let's say you want to hook it up to say, like I drive a GMC pickup uh, and I want to hook it up to my Apple CarPlay, which is a USB-C, or I'm sorry, USB type A, because they don't have USB-C ports in, I don't know, any vehicle that I've seen personally. I'm sure there are some, but I haven't seen one. I'm guessing Apple wants you to buy another adapter. USB-C to USB Type-A because you know that's Apple. They love their adapters. Not common sense. I don't understand. They should have had USB-C on the phone and not lightning port first off. And the only complaint I have along with that is since this is a lightning port and not that lightning can't handle it, but they limit it to USB 2.0 speeds. Why? I mean, if I wanna take a movie and I wanna transfer that data quickly, and not doing it over USB 2.0 speeds, it would sure be nice to have 3.1 Gen 2 or whatever the heck they want to call USB um, standards nowadays, but I mean that that's frustrating. Anyway, anyway, it is a good looking phone. I've noticed, first off, the weight does feel nice. I mean, it's, it's heavier than the other one, and that is supposed to be because of the battery. Now, uh, let's turn this thing on here. And it takes a second to hold it down, obviously, and you get your typical Apple boot up screen. Doesn't that look just wonderful? First glance, I don't know, I mean, it feels nice, it looks nice. And we'll come back here once it's all booted up. Okay, I will say that the transfer progress was very simple. Um, I went through and started my uh, transfer and, or I'm sorry, started my uh, phone up, did the welcome, all those fun things that they, they know that you like to do. And you have an option of restoring from backup, 
from iCloud, which is nice, or you can directly transfer between phones. So you just literally put your iPhone, like in my situation, my iPhone 10X, 10S, next to the iPhone 11 and waited a couple hours and it transferred all of the data, settings and everything to the phone and it was just ready to go. I did it at night, so it did it, um, so in the morning I was set to go as if I had the exact same phone. Fantastic, I am still waiting for my case and my uh, screen protector to show up because even though this is said to have stronger glass yet and an IP68 rated um, water resistance, which I do find very nice, um, nip brightness of, uh, you know, anyway, let me get back to that. Uh, even though it's got all that nice stuff, it's still glass. Odds are I'll drop it and I'll break it. Even though they say that, you know, it's stronger than ever, I'll probably break it. So I'm going to make sure that this has the necessary protection on it for a $1,350 phone, which is crazy. Anyway, uh, one thing I do notice right off the bat, and there was a big difference between this and the iPhone XS is, it is a brighter screen. They say peak brightness is, in normal mode is 800 nits, which I'll be honest, is noticeable. And then when you're going into HDR content, like watching a movie, uh, it goes up to a peak brightness, a brightness of 1200 nits. It's, I will say that when you, and I'd turn on a movie right now, but I don't wanna have a, some sort of a copyright issue, that it is a very bright screen. Uh, it's very clear. It's uh, sharp as can be. I haven't had a chance to play around with the camera too much yet. I will do so and come back and give some input on that. But the little bit I've noticed is it does uh, focus quickly. It does have the three modes of the, um, well, well, we'll cover that in a second here. Okay, here's some photos. You can see a little bit of a difference between how the iPhone 11 captures compared to the iPhone 10s. There is definitely a difference in the HDR or their overall picture. Here's just a few different ones. Forward facing camera, selfie, video, whatever, iPhone 10s, And then the forward facing camera on the iPhone 11. Same test. I will go in here and you have couple different options to take a picture correct you have your we'll just go to photo so you can see that and you have your 0.5 so that's your you're be ultra wide give your standard Actually, I'm gonna do this and then you're gonna have your telephoto what zooms very nicely and takes very good quick photos as you can see there oh I did it in video Unintentional quick photo and then your ultra wide. Now the zoom up to 10 time digital zooms very nicely and then you can get into your different telephoto modes. Your portrait will work well now so it works beyond just faces now which is really something nice so all you have to do is be able to get to the right distance and then it will tell you if it's going to work or not. You have your full mode so that it, you can get a full body picture if you'd like. So I'll take this right here and you can go in and you can edit the different settings within the photo itself. And you can see, I'll put that photo up, but you can see how it blurs out the top portion. And you can, you know, go in and change your intensity and the type and all that kind of stuff, which is really kind of interesting. I mean, they've got a lot of editing tools in this now. You can change your exposure, um, contrast, all that fun stuff. Uh, I am very curious to be able to have a chance to play around with this to see what the photos and videos are like on this as a whole. The other thing I really do notice about this phone that's nice is the face, uh, facial recognition or the face ID to open the phone is really quick. I mean, literally, I'm in the phone now. I mean, I'll close it, I'm in it. It, liter it is, a, it's way faster than the XS. And when I say way faster, it's noticeably faster. I mean, I haven't timed it. Uh, the XS did work well. 
this is faster. I've noticed it in going into Apple Pay. Uh, if I take photos, if, you know, I'm already into it. So I can hold this to my reader. It does seem to sense it further away from me than it used to. Now, before you used to have to kind of look at it awkwardly and sit here and wait to do an Apple Pay. But with this, it's just like you kind of glass down and it's already read it. And I'm ready to actually do the uh, card reader, which is, it is nice. It is a faster phone. It's taking advantage of this new 813 Bionic chip that is supposed to be a certain percentage faster than what the A12 Bionic was, which was great. I'll tell you that in between apps, switching, launching apps, I don't really notice much of a difference, if any at all. I think at this point, we're at a point in the iPhone where it's fast. It just is what it is. Now, if you compare it to say an iPhone 7, yeah, it's substantially faster. You really notice it. The 10s to the 11 Pro, I don't really notice the speed difference in things such as just opening a uh, uh, an application or closing the application or functioning within it. I don't. I think they eliminated eliminated a lot of that lag and those issues going from the 10 to the 10s and the 8 to the 10, so on and so forth. And a lot of it's more, I believe, is. I uh, got a lot of tie-in with the software. There was a big increase in performance when you went from iOS 11 to 12 and then from 12 to 13. Um, I do like iOS 13, it's smooth. I like the dark mode that they have in it now. Um, Software-wise, I think 13's a great software. So if you have iOS 12 on your current device, go to 13 as long as it's supported. If you want to have the pro camera, as they call it, I can't say that you should jump out and go buy the iPhone 11 Pro at this point. I haven't played it with it enough. I do know that the battery life is longer. Right off the bat, I have noticed that. I can leave this thing overnight and it barely touches it. Whereas my iPhone 10s, I would literally lose 20% not doing anything just overnight with it sitting on my headstand in do not disturb mode, which shouldn't really uh, eat up battery life the way it has been. But uh, I do notice that right off the bat. This is heavier, it's due to the battery. Uh, it's probably, it might have something to do with the glass on it as well. I don't know that entirely with regards to how it affects the weight, the weight itself. But overall, it's a very nice phone. Uh, I like the color. The three lenses look weird, but they work um, from the little bit I've seen. Anyway, uh, this was just meant to be a short unboxing, a quick, First impressions of the device, nothing more. This is not considered a review. This isn't considered a tutorial. I don't wanna hear, well, what's this opinion? What's that opinion? I don't have one yet. I've only had the phone a couple of days, but my initial opinion is the phone's very nice. It seems sturdy, it's snappy, it's responsive, it's bright, it's beautiful. The few photos and videos I've taken so far are very nice, they're very sharp, but I haven't played with it enough to be able to say, go get this phone. Anyway. Uh, I will have that opportunity over the next uh, week or so to do so. Maybe I'll be able to get some uh, further impressions out next week. Hopefully you liked today's video, especially with it being short. If you did so, you know what to do. Hit that uh, thumbs up button. If you didn't, you know what else to do. Please hit that subscribe button for me as it does help me out. And uh, stay tuned for this upcoming videos I've got coming in. Uh, hopefully there'll be some good ones. Have a great week.